What can a professional football player teach you about life? The answer might surprise you. I'm Pinkless Taylor, and this is Taylor Talks. Hey everybody, welcome to Taylor Talks. We put out these videos every single week. And if you're following us on Facebook, please like our page in the link above. If you're watching us on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button in the lower right. Let's jump right into it. Recently, we sat down with Miami Dolphins great Kim Bocamper, who invited us to his home to talk about what has kept him inspired throughout his life. Let's check it out. So Kim, uh, tell us a little bit about your, uh, your career as, as a Dolphin. Mm -hmm. were, were you on, were on uh, season four of the Dolphins? No, I, I was drafted by the Dolphins in 1976. Uh, I grew up in Northern California, uh, went to school at San Jose State, and um, uh, I got drafted and I've, I've been in South Florida ever since. I tell people I was climatically deprived. I had to live in Northern California and South Florida my whole life. So <laughs> tough struggles with the weather. Here, you know? Nice. Nice. So tell us a little bit about your career. Tell us about, you know, what it was like playing for the Dolphins, uh, the whole experience. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm a little different than a lot of guys that played in the NFL. I kind of came from a small school in California, didn't get recruited, uh, you know, kind of bounced my way around through college, uh, through circumstances, and, uh, and end up, you know, being surprised uh, you know, by the time I was a senior in college. Uh, people were talking about me in the NFL, so I ended up getting drafted. And, was fortunate enough to play for the Dolphins for 10 years and had a great career and was able to raise a beautiful family and call South Florida my home for the last 40 some odd years. And, um, you know, football has been a great um, springboard for me to life after football and business and in a lot of different things. So um, it's kind of the cornerstone of what my life has been about, football, the game of football. I don't think it's my, my end all be all, but it certainly has ignited everything in my life that I've, I've done before and after it. What would you say would be some highlights in your career? You know, I, I grew up in a family. My dad was a, my dad was a working guy. You know, he's a career Navy guy. Uh, you know, worked two jobs all the time when he got done with uh, with his service. And um, so I was all about working. You know, and so I didn't expect much. And my dad really didn't watch me play uh, much, uh, much high school football uh, or college football. By that matter, I think. You know, so the, really one of the highlights I. I got, I got the chance to play in the, um, which, which at the time was really probably the biggest college all-star game uh, of the year, the East-West Shrine game out in uh, Palo Alto, California. And uh, it was the first time he saw me play a football game. Uh, and and I, won, I won the defensive player of the game award and the whole thing. So it was very, it was a very special moment. So, you know, I played in two Super Bowls with the Dolphins. It were, was certainly a highlight of my career. I uh, played in Pro Bowl, which was, you know, very, from an individual standpoint, very, uh, very rewarding. But uh, if I was to capsulize the one, that, that moment probably was maybe the best moment in my, uh, in my football career. Can you just, if you could describe as a, uh, as a professional football player, some of the training that goes in, the, not just, not just practices, but some of the, from your, from your diet, from the athletics, yeah. every, from all angles. What well, it, it, it really, you know, you really have to create a lifestyle. You know, if you're going to be a professional, I can't speak for basketball or baseball, but but for football, and especially nowadays, it's even gotten more so now. I mean, we were a little bit antiquated back when I played, and um, you know, nutrition wasn't as uh, is, is highly thought of back then, or wasn't. It was kind of just beginning uh, getting a foothold in that in the growth market of of, of uh, nutrition. Now they're so you know they're so to the other end, but. Uh, but you kind of had to guide your own life. You know, you had to figure out what, you know, how to get your rests, how to train, uh, how to eat properly. And um, uh, so it's a discipline. It's a discipline that you had. And, you know, we weighed in once a week during the regular season or during the, you know, during the regular season. So we had to make weight and everything. So that always kind of dictated yourself. But it was, a, it was a lot more back then. It was a lot more self-reliant. You had to go out and do it yourself. Whereas now, um, you know, everything is structured for the players from, uh, from off season, from nutrition, from hydration, from their workout programs, and, and everything. So um, it's a little bit more, you know. I was, it's kind of that football mentality. Just tell me what time I need to be on the bus, and that's all I need to know. So right, they, they right. kind of have, they kind of have that mentality now. Right. That, so know. it's like a, almost like a small army. It's yeah, it, very, very much so. Yes. Okay. Very cool. Um, so it, through your career, are there things that either a mentor, a coach, Coach Shula, 
um, shared with you that was inspiring to you that helped keep you going, or things that you learned in particular that, you know, when it was a day where, you know, it's not always easy to, to wake up and be on the bus on time yeah. and keep that diet. And what, what were some of the ways in which you found, you know, that you could persevere uh, when things got tough? Uh, you know, that, that's, a, that's a funny question for me, and it's a little bit, because I, I had a different path than most guys. Come here. And, um, you know, uh, like I said, I didn't get recruited out of high school, so I, I went, um, went to a little small school in Minnesota and kind of paid my way. And then when my, my mother passed away when I was there, so I came back and went to a junior college in San Jose, and then I didn't get a scholarship until I was a junior in, in college, so I paid my way through school. Uh, my, my first two years and um, uh, but but that process to me goes all the way back to I, I talk about my dad you know I think my dad uh, probably was the biggest influence in my life although he wasn't in my life a lot not because we were a, a separated family or anything but he was in the career he was in, he was, you know, he was in the Navy he was an aviator he was an engineer and playing he was gone all the time you know, he was always somewhere in the, in the, you know, in Asia or whatever. You know, he spent a lot of time away from home. But when he was home, he instilled a discipline in, in all of us. Um, and I tell you, he, you know, he didn't care for sports, didn't know much about sports, didn't want to know anything about sports. Oh, wow. And so my, my, um, you know, he always told me, look, if you, you can play sports, but you're going to do your work first. So, mm -hmm. you know, when I started playing football when I was a kid, nine, ten years old, uh, we'd have games on Sundays, and Sunday mornings I had to clean the garage before I could go play football. Uh, okay. So I didn't clean the garage, I couldn't go play football. And, and, and that was my, that was, you know, he was a work, that was the mentality yeah, I grew yeah. up with. Um, and like I said, he didn't care much about sports, but he cared about me not quitting. And when I was, a, uh, I was in junior high school, I tried out for the baseball team, um, and I made the team, uh, but I wasn't playing. You know, and I was getting frustrated with that. And so I quit the team. Uh, I quit the team. Uh, and I remember coming home, came home, didn't tell my dad I quit. And then the next day, uh, he came home early for some reason. I was home. He goes, what are, how, what are you doing home? He goes, I thought you had baseball practice. I said, no, I quit. And he just went crazy. I mean, he, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't real happy with that. Oh, wow. and, and he wasn't happy. He wasn't. He wasn't disappointed because it was baseball or football or, or something else. He was just disappointed that I quit. And, and, you know, he, at that point, he let me know in no uncertain terms that you don't quit. If you start something, finish, finish it. it. And so that always stayed with me. And, 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 you know, the reason I kind of talk about my path through college was it was a tough path. I mean, you know, I, I went to a school that was smaller than my freshman year. I went to a school that was smaller than my high school. Oh, wow. and played. It wasn't Division One. it wasn't Division Two. it wasn't Division Three. it was a step below that. Then I went to junior college, which is kind of an odd path, and then, uh, you know, played at a relatively obscure school at San Jose State. So I kind of followed a different, but the one thing I, and, and believe me, there were plenty of times along the way where, you know, you're frustrated and, and you want to quit, but I, I, I just, uh, I just refused to quit. And, and I think that's kind of been my, my, um, that's kind of been the driving force behind everything I've done. Football, pre-football, post-football, uh, and throughout my life now continues to be uh, pretty much dictated by that. Never give up. No. no. That's great advice, I mean, because there's so many times in, in life and in, yeah. in anything that, you know, start something and, you know, the, 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 easiest, yeah. the easiest thing to do is just forget well, it. All, all, you know, all of us at some point in our life and maybe multiple times in our life are forced to quit something. You know, you're forced to say you can't do that anymore. You're forced to say, you know, especially if you're in sports, you get too old, you can't do it anymore, this, that, all those type, types of things. But And that's a different thing. But to voluntarily walk away from something that you started, um, you know, look, I've got involved in things work-wise and where, where I, I got into it and said, man, this isn't, this is really not where I want to end up. And, and, and I wouldn't quit, but I would find an exit strategy to get me to another <clears throat> something else. Right, right. Auto call it, call it auto. <clears throat> yes. You know, okay, look, I know this isn't quite what I want to do. I don't see this being what I want to do for the next 20 years of my life. Um, much like guys that did, you know, I got done playing football. I was 31, 32 years old. Right. And, and most of the guys, most of my contemporaries that didn't play football that I grew up with or knew, 
know, they were just kind of starting their careers off because they had gone, you know, they got out of college, tried this job, didn't like it, and then went to that job and didn't like it, and then found something they could make a career out of. And, and so I kind of had, had to go through that at post 32 years right, old. Right. And after having um, a good career. Yeah. But, but I chose, but I, you know, I, I never, I never moved from one thing to another unless I had something to go to. Mm -hmm. So it was more, I wouldn't call it, it was more of just, you know, kind of weaving my way through. But to me, it was kind of a business education um, uh, for me. So that was, that's kind of, kind of how I've lived my life. Let's sum it up. If you had one message for young people today that were, <clears throat> you know, not necessarily going into athletics, but just starting out life and, you know, kind of looking at life, what, what would you, what would you tell them? You know, it's funny, I'm going through this with my, my daughter a little bit. She, she does some work for the Dolphins. And uh, there are times when it's, you know, it's a, it's, um, especially with things that are going on with um, the hurricanes we've had. And, and, and they're very big in relief programs, okay. you know. And so sometimes they're, you know, they're, they're working long hours. They're working, you know, 12-hour, 13-hour shifts. And she'll come home and go, ah, you know, I'm so tired. You know, I, you know, I go, look, I go, <laughs> I tell her, I said, well, that's why they call it work. You know, it's not fun. It's, it's work, and, and so I would just tell people that you know, persevere. Just you know, nothing, nothing's easy. You know, I, I don't care what it is. I, it's funny because I'm in the restaurant business now, and uh, you know, we've been in the business now for for ten years, and everyone's told me. Everyone, when I got into that business, everyone goes, "Oh, geez, that's the toughest business to get into. Why do you want to get into that?" And I previously, it, uh, my, the first business I got into, I bought an automobile battery distributorship. Uh, from Coral Gables to Key West, I own that territory. Okay. And when I was getting that, everyone said, ah, oh, it's the toughest business. Why do you want to get this business? <laughs> toughest business. Um, but I, I kind of saw that as a challenge, you know, and uh, and I always told myself, well, the answer is, well, then show me an easy business. I'll get into an easy right, business. Right. I, don't think I don't think there's one out there that exists. But I think you gotta you got to find your path and just persevere through it. And, and there's nothing wrong with making changes. There's nothing wrong with coming to a fork in the road and, choosing to go in a different direction as long as you're going somewhere and have a plan uh, for going through it. But I think it's just, you know, I've had a lot of, uh, I've had a lot, a lot, probably more than most people and probably more than I deserve, but I've had a lot of very, very high points in my life, both as an athlete, as a, uh, as a person, as a, as a father, as a husband, uh, as all those things. I've had some great, great highs in my life. But I've also had some very tough, tough times and tough lows, and uh, and I've just learned to fight through those. Just fight through them and fight through them because eventually, you know, if if you give up, if you give up, your chances to me, your chances of succeeding are, are diminished. If you fight through and persevere, um, I think you get rewarded for that at some point along the lines. Whether it's whether it's uh, personal, whether it's professional, whether it's spiritual. Whatever way it is, I think perseverance is the test, and, and if you can persevere, you, you you finally get to the ultimate reward for yourself. So when the lows come around, keep your nose to the grind. Keep your nose to the grindstone and fight your way through it. it. Yeah. All right, awesome. Ken, thanks so much for My having pleasure. us out here. Right, thank you very much. That's so awesome. Okay, thank you very much. Sure.